At the altar in Holy Mass, Millet wrote, it is Jesus Christ who offers gifts, changes the bread and wine into his own body and blood, and immolates the victim. As Jesus Christ and the Church, according to St. Augustine, are not two Christs, but one Christ, so the eternal priest and all priests born in time are not a multitude of priests, but one priest. The man disappears in this august mystery. His personality, Millet continued, is converted into that of the man God, who gives him the power to say at the moment of consecration, this is my body. In addition to having sole responsibility for offering the sacrifice of the mass, priests were granted the ability to absolve sin. No one who was not an extension of the Lord could do that, and except under extraordinary circumstances, no one except a priest was allowed to act for him. To a pure-hearted Catholic, abilities like that made a fellow more powerful than anyone, including the president, any president. Even if some of the other kids in Waterbury didn't quite see it that way, it was true in the eyes of Michael McGivney. And while a priest was not entitled to entertain the passion of worldly ambition, it could not be lost on a young man considering the priesthood that he would, if ordained, be a force in a community, a force that might even outlast his own life on earth. Father Millet made another observation that presaged Michael McGivney's life. It is Jesus Christ who lives and acts in the priest. That is why he has the power to reform and to make perfect, not only individuals, but entire nations. For his is preeminently a civilizing influence. All institutions religious in character, all moral and philanthropic associations, not touched by the hand of the priest and vivified by his breath, languish, wither, and die. The opportunity to join in an internal way with the Holy Family and extend its powers on earth may have been the primary appeal of the priesthood for a boy with the depth of belief of Michael McGivney. But then there was that other aspect of living as truly as possible as a brother of Christ. Moral leadership within a community of very human, human beings, both believers and skeptics, and most important, perhaps, those who were wavering between the two.